Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here, and Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead is getting remade for some reason. So we decided to take a look back at the original. Is it really Home Alone times five? Let's find out. Tapes were talk, talking, talk, talking, talking about tapes. Hello, Casey. Hi, Tony. Wow. All these years, we waited for a Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter Sitter's Dead remake, and it's finally here. So random. You let me know about it, and you're like, okay, so this is coming out, so we have to review yes, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Look, we're filming this a little bit ahead of time. Hopefully a better trailer is out, because the teaser they put out is terrible. It's really bad. It's If it was just like the scene with the babysitter showing up and then it just stopped fine but then it's another disjointed scene of just the kids angry looking uh-huh and then a scene of nicole richie quoting a line from this movie but like she doesn't quote it she doesn't even quote the line i know i know but like i think they think this movie's more popular <laughs> than it is like i know it has a cult following right. but honestly if I didn't rewatch this movie and I saw that, I would have been like, what the fuck is that? I don't understand oh, what that means. I mean, I would have remembered it, but I was thinking back to when did I first see this movie? I don't even remember I, when I had first seen it. This is one of those, like, it was on a lot. For you, maybe. I guess, yeah. Well, it says HBO video, so I guess mm -hmm. it was on HBO a lot. Maybe like uh, the early 2000s. I definitely saw I it. I didn't in, have that. I definitely saw it in the 90s. Mm -hmm. It was definitely in the early 2000s. I believe this is one of my grandfather's tape and it looks pretty worn Get out. out. That's so cool. I, it looked pretty worn out and mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't own this tape. It was his. So that means like my, my cousin Jessica probably watched this movie a lot. Oh, it's it, definitely a girl's girl movie. Yeah, the tape is super Aww, faded. That's so cool. I, I think I just saw the DVD maybe. I'm not sure. That's my DVD. Yeah. I don't know. Um, But yeah, I remember really liking it as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, it was fun. Um... Is it Home Alone Times 5? We'll answer that at the end. So right. It's definitely trying to market itself like that. Uh, the title is misleading because uh -huh. you kind of think the whole movie is going to be about that. Yeah. Uh, and originally the title was supposed to be called The Real World. Ew. It makes more sense if you think no. that. No, because yes. she has to enter the real world. There is a whole underlying lying underlining yeah there's a whole underlining theme yes for sure uh but they changed it because i think around late 80s early 90s uh the real world show yeah was like a thing so they were like we don't want to confuse it but i guess they named it my theory for why they named it don't tell mom the babysitter's dead i feel like they're trying to cash in on the weekend at bernie's thing oh. like even the advertising it kind of makes it think like oh are they gonna Pretend the babysitter's alive the That's whole time. Strategic. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, like, the babysitter, like, you forget that that lady dies, like, right. midway through the movie. I know. Which is funny for a joke at the end. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, again, watch it a lot. Our girl is in it. Daniel Our Harris. Our girl, as soon as she came on the stream, I'm like, there she is. <laughs> and she's on record, like, I listened to her podcast. She has said that whenever this movie comes on, she'll leave it on because it's her favorite one, I think, her, yeah. of her work. I um I read here Jennifer Love Hewitt was almost cast in that yeah. role. Yeah. Young Tony would have won either way. <laughs> he had a crush on both of them. But she was in a contract with Kids Incorporated. Yes. Um, this is directed by Stephen Herrick, who did Critters. Uh-huh. Uh, Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, and he would go on to do the Mighty Ducks and the Three Musketeers, the Disney 90s Wait, one. The Mighty Ducks? Huh? He did the Mighty Ducks? He did the first, the first Mighty one? Ducks. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And he's gone on. Now I think he mostly does like uh, TV stuff. You're missing one. What one did he do? He did Mr. Holland's Opus, uh, which I haven't seen and don't spoil it, but I really want to see it. I haven't seen it. And I already know a spoiler, so I'm really I haven't. upset. You, you know haven't what? seen it? You know what's funny? I've heard that title. So many times. Yeah. I have no idea who's in it. I don't have any idea what it's uh, about. Ah, uh, I can't remember. You said you didn't see it. I haven't seen it. And you're like, you didn't see it, Tony? <laughs> well, Tony. I mean, come on. Look, I was watching shit like, don't Back tell the mom movies. the babysitter's dead. I don't know. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> but Andre Gower from the Monster Squad, that's one of his 
most favorite oh, movies. Okay. And I think it got him into acting. That's why I was like, oh, I got to see Mr. Holland's opus. <laughs> Gosh, I can't remember. I don't know. Well, I got to check that out. Um, don't look up the spoilers. So Christina Applegate was like a big movie for her. Uh, apparently, uh, Winona Ryder passed on this. Oh. And I think Justine Bateman had to turn it down. Who's that? That's Jason Bateman's sister. What is she from? A lot of movies. Huh. <laughs> um, I don't even know who she is. So if I, I see her. She's a couple episodes of Arrested Development with Jason Bateman. <laughs> if I see her, I'm sure if you I'm see, Yeah, she's one of those, like, if you see her, like, okay, I know that person. <laughs> I, off the top of my head, I can't remember what she's most It's okay. So. Um... So apparently Ed O'Neill from Married with Children, yes. Al Bundy, he was a friend of the producer. So oh. he like gave the script to Christina Applegate. So yeah, and then she got the part. And uh, yeah, the rest, I guess, is history. This movie wasn't a big hit, apparently. Mm. Uh, but it has gotten a cult following, I yep. think, because it played on cable so much. Right. I feel like this was always on. <laughs> this is one thing I miss. Oh animated opening title sequences that have very little of anything to do with the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the Santa scene from Na uh, Christmas Vacation. Oh, yeah. How it opens up with the Santa cartoon. It's so funny that you say that because I don't think I ever watched the animated scene. I watched it for this video, for this review, because yeah. I always skip through the animated Oh, uh, you do? I did. <laughs> and it's not even sh long. It's not. It's like 30 seconds. You know who voices the babysitter? No. Homer Simpson. Dan oh, Casanova. Get out. Yeah. How cool. Yeah. Um, so I, so they call her Swell, but she's Sue Ellen, right? I know that's her name in the job, at her job, it's yes. Sue Ellen. Yeah, and then I heard Sue Ellen. I was like, I couldn't remember her real name. I'm just calling her Sue. Well, I think her real name is Sue Ellen. Sue Ellen. But I think they call her Swell at some point. We're okay. just going to call her Sue Ellen. So Sue Ellen is upset. Mm -hmm. Her friends are going to Europe. But that's okay, because her mom is also leaving town for two months. <laughs> uh-huh. And she's going to live it up. And then keep in mind, she's 17. She's not an adult yet. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'll have f f my four other siblings all watch each other, <laughs> and I'm going to go to the beach and go out and do all this stuff. And she loves fashion. That's very important. She loves fashion. Making a movie about fashion during the late 80s, early 90s, probably the worst time you could Oof. have made a movie about fashion because yeah, that is one of the worst period. That that overlap between 80s and 90s was really bad. The fashion show at the end. <laughs> oh, <Ooh>. God. <laughs> I remember. Eek. I'll save it for there. Remind mm -hmm. me what, what my cousin used to say when we watched this. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, she's going to live it up. And uh, these are the siblings. I love that the mom doesn't have a name. It's oh, just mom. They oh, never give her gosh. a name. So they're the Crandells. Crandells. And Christina Applegate, again, is Sue Ellen. Uh, she's the oldest. Then there's Keith Coogan as uh, Kenny. Mm -hmm. Kenneth uh, Crandall. <laughs> He's the second oldest one. He's a stoner and a burnout. Totally. And then there's, this one's kind of sad. I Christopher know. Petiet as know. Zach Crandall. He's the 14-year-old brother. He's love struck over a girl. His moon goddess. Yeah. Did you hear the behind the scenes on this one? Uh, Like, tell me, because I might have. I'm not sure. Does it feel like he just disappears for chunks of this movie? No, I didn't uh, think so. Apparently, he had like a little bit of a drug issue. I saw that, but even at that age. I think he's, I think he looked younger than he was. He was probably Get years old. Get out of here. But apparently he had a drug issue. Sadly, he did not beat that drug issue years later. He did yeah, die. But like, apparently, horrible. like. Because he kind of is just there. Him and the Daniel Harris character, they're kind of just there mm -hmm. for a lot of the movie. But apparently he had more scenes, but like he was like being real difficult to like work with. So they just never even shot the scenes. He looks like he's 12 years old. I know. I know. But I feel like there was supposed to be more there with him being all girl sick and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of like I always forget that he's in the movie. And I think they just didn't film a lot of his plot line. I didn't notice that as much. Really? I I. I don't know, because I, I forgot he was a kid. Like, when I turned this on, I'm like, oh, yeah, there was another brother. Mm -hmm. I forgot about him. I thought he was a, such a sweetheart in this, though. Yeah. And then Daniel Harris as Melissa. She's mm -hmm. the tomboy. Uh, and then Robert High Gorman from Leprechaun. Leprechaun. <laughs> as Walter. And he's the youngest one. He loves TV. Oh, he's so cute. I, I related a lot to Walter at the oh, time. Oh, he's so cute. Him and his dog, Elvis. <laughs> I love that. It's funny. That's my mom's dog's name. Oh, Tony. <laughs> 
connections. So yeah, they're all excited, and then the babysitter shows up. She shows up. I'm Mrs. Stewart. I'm the babysitter. You ever seen Doctor Sardonicus? No, I know what it Do is. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. When like someone gets buried with the money, and then he goes to dig it up, and then he's stuck with the smile. Yes. She looks like that. <laughs> Yes. She'll also be buried with money. Oh, no, not buried ah! with money, but. <gasps> True. I don't know Spoiler. if it's Mr. Sardonicus or Dr. Sardonicus. Can't remember. Oh, it's going back a minute. But I probably I love had to edit a video movie. about it a long time ago. So good. Um, Sue Ellen is not happy. She's like, what the hell? She's like, you're not an adult. <laughs> I need someone to watch you guys. Yeah. That's fair. Um, so, yeah, uh, Mrs. Sturak, she's trying to be like real friendly at first. Mm hmm. Real nice. And then as soon as the mom leaves, the Twilight Zone music plays. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I would have picked that music. Oh, for I that. think it's cute. I guess it's supposed to be because she's evil, but I don't really think evil when it's Twilight Zone. I think more weird. Yeah. Uh, I would have had like the Omen theme play or Darth, of course or, have. or Darth Vader's theme play. Cool. Yeah, that one would have that made a little bit more sense. Yeah. But that's universal. The yeah. Twilight Zone. I mean, like, everyone yeah. knows that sound. Yeah. But um, when I was a babysitter once, yeah. <laughs> I was, like, with the kids, and then um, their parents left. And then I told them, now they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> and then they came right back in and heard me the whole time. I was like, I'm just kidding. I swear. <laughs> it was just for fun. I am a great babysitter. Oh. I, I told the story before that I showed my goddaughter and her sister the first Leprechaun movie. Oh. Wow. That's connected, too. Yeah, the youngest one mm. didn't really like leprechauns after that. Uh, no, that's traumatizing. Oops. <laughs> I saw that when I was little, too. But I, did you ever have babysitters? I, yes. They were all nice. Mm -hmm. We but. had one kind of like this, mm. and she made my sister brush her hair, and my sister hated brushing her hair. She mm. always had knots. Mm. And we had to drink milk. Mm -hmm. I didn't like milk. Yeah, I think I used to. I don't know. Can't even remember these days. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so my the youngest goddaughter, she was afraid of leprechauns. And my uh -huh. cousin called me. She's like, hey, why are my kids pretending to be leprechauns saying they're going to rip ears off? And I'm like, God damn it, they ran up. Wow. And then I babysit my other cousin's kids. Um, you met the one, Rocco, but oh my his goodness. sister, I used to babysit his sisters and uh, I grounded the one. You grounded it, them? Uh, I grounded the one. I grounded the one twice. Whoa. Uh, because the first time it was after Jurassic Park got re-released for its mm -hmm. 20th anniversary and she said she didn't like the T-Rex scene and I went, go to your room. Go to your room right now. <laughs> go to your goddamn room. As you should. And then she thought it'd be funny to spray me in the face with Windex. I, honestly, I was more angry about the T-Rex scene. I'm like, how could you possibly say something like that? <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. But then the other sister, I, would, I showed her the Star Wars trilogy. It was awesome. I'm a great babysitter. <laughs> I, yeah, I would have enjoyed you as a babysitter. And the twins like me babysitting them. You know, sometimes oh, they cry and I shake them until they stop and everything's mm. fine. <laughs> I keep making that joke. I'm waiting for one person to believe that I'm actually shaking babies. <laughs> she makes Walter do a book assignment. That was hilarious. <laughs> I thought it was so funny. The fuck? She picks, by the way, she picks a random book. Art <laughs> bars, I think, right? Yeah, what does she know about art bars? <laughs> oh, it was so cute. Um... And then uh, freaking, uh, what's his face? Zach is trying to kiss his girlfriend. Ew. And then she's like a horror movie just outside the window. <laughs> They're too young for that. It seemed way too like sensual for I wouldn't have them. had it in a car. Yeah. Uh, the car makes it. Like maybe on the couch in the house. Or just like on, they, they had a big the deck. Steps, yeah, yeah, they had a big deck like or something. Why? The fact that they're in the back seat of a car. I'm like, oh. Look, I get what. Mrs. Sturak is trying to do, but I don't think she had to call the girl a trollop. <laughs> that was a little too far. <laughs> I'm like, okay, lady, let's slow down a little bit uh, here. Sure, you and Mr. Sturak used to fool around in yeah. the back of a car. Um, and then here's a scene that's either not going to be in the remake, or if it is, it's going to be a way bigger deal. It's time for little girls to dress like little girls. By the way, why does Melissa even have that weird dress? Oh, every girl has to have a dress like that. Really? Yes. Even at like 12? Yes. With like the Easter weird... Sunday, I could just see that's what it was for. Yeah, or she brought it with her. Not sure. But it's like 
at nighttime that she's making her put this on. Yeah, that was the weird thing. <laughs> it's like the, the put the pajamas on. We're just on. showing how horrible this babysitter is. Yeah. Making them not making them the the complete opposites of themselves. Mm -hmm. All of that. Uh and Kenny isn't around. Kenny's the only one who never meets the babysitter. Oh, yeah. Because he, he leaves with his stoner friends when the right. mom leaves. And doesn't she say something about the dishes? Yeah. Okay, that comes back later. She wants the dishes done. Mm -hmm. And a few things come back later. Well, a few things we missed. Uh, the mom gave her a bunch of cash. Yes. To buy, like, groceries and stuff for the two months that she's away. Mm -hmm. Two but, months? Yeah. I was wondering how long it was. And she's in Australia? Yeah. With her boyfriend? I, I like that the mom's like, I'm 38. I need a vacation. <laughs> yeah, she definitely does. Man, I can't imagine me having five kids at 38. No way. And she definitely had kids, like, young. Because, mm -hmm. like, yeah. I, I Two months in Australia seems about right. <laughs> yeah, and they don't say very nice things about their dad. No, they, don't, they entertain the idea once and they never yeah. follow up on it. Yeah, so uh, she has the money. She's supposed to be watching them. She goes into <laughs> Kenny's room and she's terrified of everything. I do like that Kenny censors his own poster of the girl's boobs. I was like, I want to do that. I <laughs> love how it's set up. I thought that was genius. What was it? It was like a spider and a skull, right? Yes, and yeah. they're both moving. Nobody clip me going like that, please. I just, <laughs> no. and I'm doing it again. Nobody do that. <laughs> be respectful. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, uh, she's like freaking out about it. And then later on, uh, what's her face? Swelling Sue. comes home and she's like, I'm going to give that babysitter a piece of my mind. <laughs> yeah. She's just like, I don't talk to her. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. The babysitter's dead. <gasps> I couldn't believe the babysitter died in this movie called Don't Tell Mom <laughs> the Babysitter's Dead. Yeah. They... They make this decision really fast where they're like, well, she's I dead. Know. They're like, oh, should we call the ambulance? Should we call the hospital? It's like, oh, no, but the mom would have to come home Ugh. instead of her just being like, well, let me call some of my friends. Maybe they have a different babysitter. Yeah. Like mom will have to come home and then she'll be mad at us, which it's not even their fault. Like the lady was old. If anything, it's on the mom. She should have been like, nah, you can't do this. Yeah. Where did she find this woman? But a mom would go home. Hmm. I wouldn't. Unless I, they I, are. But that could have been that whole Home Alone situation. They could have had that storyline where the mom's trying to get home. Yeah. But they didn't. No, because so. again, they're trying to do the... Again, it's a little weekend. It's not at, like Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a little weekend at Bernie's because throughout the film, she'll call and they'll make up reasons for why right. the babysitter isn't there. But yeah, they're just like, yeah, I don't know what to do. But like, I, I do like that the babysitter's like, I'm a widow and I have no family. <laughs> <laughs> they had to get it in there somehow. And you know what? A um, uh, friend of the show, Kaylee, she yes. made me. Uh, she made me watch that terrible Dumb and Dumber sequel. Oh yeah, Dumb and Dumber Two. Yeah, you texted and me about that. One of the only jokes I thought was funny is when the guy wants to kill uh, Harry and Lloyd. And beforehand, they're like, yeah, we don't have IDs or voter <laughs> registrations or social security cards. And we have no relatives. And I thought that was funny. I was like, oh, I'm remembering it being funny in this movie. <laughs> so now that's only, I'm going from three to two scenes that were funny in that terrible film. Oh, don't watch. I guess the, you should watch. Don't watch the Dumb and Dumber. I mean, watch video. that review, but don't watch the Dumb and Dumber sequel. I wasn't planning on it, to be honest. I envy you. I, I went 10 years. Oh my gosh, he envies me. I went 10 years not watching that movie. Just super happy. And then I finally watched Kaylee. it. I went, I went, I hate, I hate this so much. She did it out of love, I'm sure. No, anyway. Uh, <laughs> so they're like, they literally are just like, all right, well. Time to throw her in a trunk and drop her off at a mortuary. Didn't you think, like, how are they going to pull this off? I don't know. <laughs> I was just like, I because I hadn't seen it for a bit. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, how are they going to pull this off? How I do know. they pull this off? But, like, I get they mm. drop it off at the mortuary with a note. Some old, nice, nice old lady yeah. died of natural causes. With all the true crime podcasts right now. People would have eaten that up. Guys, guys, look. I know you can leave like a baby at a fire station Best and they, can still. They, they will take care of it and whatnot. If you leave a dead body at a mortuary, 
they're not going to embalm it and put it in the ground. They're going to call the cops and yeah. be like, holy shit, there's a corpse at the mortuary. And then the cops are going to be like, what's the big deal? Like, no, not one that's supposed to be here. It's a random <laughs> one that was dropped off. How did they even fit her in there? <laughs> they folded her up. Oh, my. <laughs> They have, it's pretty rude. I'm like, I know we're supposed to like feel for these kids. I'm like, they are cold hearted. They are a little <laughs> like, cold literally. Hard. Like there's no ounce of guilt. No. But I'm like, is it because they're younger? I don't know. I feel, I feel a little guilty. Like the babysitter dying would, I don't know if I would care that mm -hmm. much because she was mean. But like once I start like throwing the old bag in the trunk. Yeah. I mean, I'd start to be like, wait, I don't know if we're doing the right thing. It would right eat me a lot. Yeah. People do stuff to me and I can't sleep at night. <laughs> but they're driving their mom's car, right? Yes. The mom left the car. Did she? Oh, she didn't come in a car. The no, she did. She did. Yeah, the Her babysitter had the Buick. Okay. Which is what Sue Ellen drives through most of the movie. And it's oh. like, Sue Ellen... If the cops figure out who that corpse is, they're going to be looking for her car. She obviously is registered. Not a worry in the world. Um, Just about how they're going to eat. That was like the only worry. That was literally, they acted like they were going to die. Yeah. It's like, ah, you could have figured out something. Um, but no, they they are more worried about one thing. The money. Oh, yeah. Cut so they can eat. Yes. Uh, I do like that they're on their way. They have the bag where the money was in. Uh -huh. And then they're like, the money's not here. And it's like, Mrs. Sturak pocketed that money. Oof. And they left it with her at the mortuary. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they um, they lie to the mom. Mm -hmm. uh, Dana Harris suggests that they eat the dog. Oh, I know. Elvis, he's so cute. He does look appetizing. It's trying to <laughs> He's just so cute. Also, she's like a psychopath. She was like burning oh, I know. cockroaches and yeah. whatnot. It's, it's like, is that what tomboys are like? <laughs> I feel like you grow out of that at, yeah. by 12, I think. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that she was enjoying it so much. She's perfect for that role. Yeah. I mean, Jennifer Love Hewitt would have done great, but still, yeah. it's Daniel Harris's role. And again, she's not really like in it that much. I know. Her and the other brother, they're kind of just in and out of the movie. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, they decide that one of them has to get a job. Yeah. The two oldest ones. And they flip the Celeste pizza. <laughs> a pizza box. That makes it fun. Rather than a coin. Yeah. Sue Ellen's got to get a job. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> the yeah. whole time. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he, that guy was not getting a job. Uh, no. There's no way that guy was getting a job. Not a legal one anyway. Yeah. He was buying weed. I don't think he was selling weed. Not a legal one. I did forget like how kind of adult this movie is. It's PG. It's PG. Yeah, I was but they're say, like cursing a lot mean. during it. Did you notice that they? Oh, there dubbed was a lot. Yeah, okay. one was dubbed, but I feel like they say I shit like at one point, right? I feel like there are a few. He I... says the worst words. Huh? I notice he curses yeah. the most. I have a specific one where I caught. A line being dubbed. It's coming up. I'll, okay, because it happens a few times. Yeah. Does he drop the F bomb? No, I don't think he okay. does. But I feel like he says shit a couple yes. times. Which he is does weird. Curse. This got the PG rating because of that. Usually back like, in the day, it was different. 16 <laughs> Candles comes back to that. There's boobs. That's true. And it's PG. That's why I hate. I hate the G, PG. Just tell me what's in the movie. Yeah. Because I've gifted that. that before huh? for a sweet 16. I've gifted that movie. And there's boobs. You can't do that. I saw boobs in movies like at a very young age. It meant nothing. If you're me. an adult giving a 16 year old that movie and there's boobs. In this and day and age? Oh, whatever. In this day and age? Uh, it's not, K it's Casey, not me. Casey, you think a DVD with one scene of boobs is going to bother a 16 year old in this okay, day? Okay, okay. They're looking at boobs I get and it. whatnot. They have like an endless supply on their phone. That's Your horrible. DVD is not even making a 10. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we live in a very different age. Okay. I know I know movies and cable was like big for us, but these kids. Because, they have yeah, so much I didn't access. think about it that way. I had to go to the woods to find this stuff. <laughs> woods porn. It was a thing. Every time I mention it on the show, I get like 17 guys that go like, I also, it's been a phenomenon with young men. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. R Trisha said the same thing. And now like, it's been two years. She's like, I'm <laughs> <Please don't. laughs> sorry. Don't show that. That's a spoiler for the mailbag episode. 
<laughs> anyway. Okay. Your sweet, sweet 16 thing, it's fine. Thank you. Sue Ellen is like, I like fashion. I'll get a job easily. Mm-hmm. She ends up working at the clown doll. Yep. Cut to fast food restaurant. And they're playing. If they, if I work somewhere that played the clown music on a loop, mm-hmm. I blow my brains. I would not be yeah. able to listen to that all day long. But for some reason, these bags, mm. the cl- clown dog, mm. the bags that have the food in it, look so appetizing to me. <laughs> like this whole movie, they are gigantic bags, huge bags. The sound of them, the yeah. look of them. Um, the whole thing is a big, this movie is a whole ASMR thing for me. <laughs> I don't know why. Look, maybe the DVD had good sound, but the VHS, the sound was a little poor. <laughs> it might um, be the sound, yeah. Oh, God. DVD. Who plays Brian, the love interest? He's in a million TV shows. I just shows. know him from, I think, Dead Poet Society. I don't know his name. Yeah, I'm blanking on his name. But he's so cute. I'll look, if you look at him, you'll be like, I've seen that guy on yeah. a million TV shows or in a million trailers for TV yes. shows. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the owner of the clown dog is the clown. I yeah, I feel like he has there. There's like an alternate universe where he's in his own <laughs> movie where he's just a murderer. Like it just feels like he's a murderer. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. That's like too many cooks. I can see that for sure. <laughs> it's just I feel like you can make a whole side quill to this. Yes. Where he's like that Sue Ellen girl just oh. quit. I'm gonna murder someone. <laughs> Oh. He, he's the young Stu Rack or whatever. He's like, my mom disowned me years ago. Oh, yes. I just found out they dropped her corpse off at a mortuary. We can make a way that better movie be than what's coming out. I was just going to say, <laughs> that sounds really good. It'd be hard to pitch, though. Be like, what's your movie about? It's like, well, remember, don't tell mom the babysitter said no. Okay. Well, in that movie, there's like a boss. And like he looked weird, so we want to make a movie about it, but we're not getting this. Do movie we made. know who's directing the new one? Let's look it up. Wade Elaine Marcus. Are you kidding me? Who has directed some Spanish short film, a movie called French Dirty, one episode of a show called Grown Ish, and one episode of a show <laughs> called Everything's Trash. Okay, so we don't know why this movie is getting remade. Somewhere. I've seen the remake of Adventures in Babysitting, and I really like that. There was a remake of Adventures in Babysitting? Uh, yeah. When did that come out? It's on Disney Channel. It was a Disney Channel movie. When? I want to say I was still living in LA at the time, so like 2018 maybe? How did that? Yeah. I don't even really- It's great. I don't really care about the original one that much, but ah! it's just weird that like- it's been a minute since I've seen it. I didn't. Uh, I, well, I was too busy watching Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's <laughs> Dead. Adventures of Babysitting didn't play as much. Yes, or I didn't catch it as I much guess. on cable. Both starring Keith Coogan. I met him at a Monster Mania. So I had him sign my Adventures in Babysitting DVD. Yeah. And I didn't get a picture with him only because we were wearing masks at the time. Mm. And I didn't, it didn't make sense to me. What you call it? Uh, Deborah Hill produced that, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think she did. I know. Chris Columbus, did he direct it? I know what's his face. Uh, plays the mechanic who looks like Thor. Vincent D'Onofrio. Um, um, yeah. What's he from? Law and Order? Or? Yeah, he's Law and Order from oh, Metal I lo- Jacket. Yeah. He's cool. He played Thor in that. I can't believe that's him. And he ended up playing Kingpin in Daredevil. He's been oh. two characters. <laughs> well, that's why Thor is my favorite of the Marvel. Ah, uh, okay. Marvel, yes. Yes. Yes, because of that movie. Well, if you like Thor, don't watch that last movie. Okay. Just be blissfully ignorant. It ends at Endgame. Don't watch anything else except Spider-Man. I know, plan to. That last movie was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Anyway, um, uh, we went on a long tangent about a the boss. Yes, the boss. So she quits. <laughs> yes. She takes Brian's advice. He's like, why don't you just quit? She's like, maybe I will. Yeah. Uh, and she leaves Brian to like clean up that I know. mess. It's like, dude, come on. He's so sweet. I don't even see him as a guy that she would go for. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he had to grow on her. Yes. Um, which is shocking that he did, because like he only worked with her for like one day. It's not like he's working with her every day, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And Kenny uh, gets high with his bros, and he talks about uh, just failing school. Uh huh. And uh, I relate. I didn't relate to the getting high part, but I definitely relate to Kenny when it came to failing every fucking class oh, in high school. I didn't know school. that about you. Huh? I didn't know that about I you. I was an awful student. Daydreaming. I was a terrible student. 
Yeah, partly daydreaming, other part falling asleep. Yeah. The biggest problem was just all the schools kept passing me when I clearly should have been held back. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, I really related to Kenny. <laughs> no. And also, no. I just hate school. Remember his pants? Both of the butt, like under the butt was cut out. Like, <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah, he's walking up the stairs and there's two like under his butt. <laughs> she goes home and she fakes a resume from a resume book. Which those exist? I guess it would show you how to write a resume. Okay. Like, like, you know how you probably write in a resume? Yes. You probably download it like a template, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I assume it was something like gotcha. that before PDFs. So here, like, here's what it should look like. <laughs> wow, um, a book. Huh? It was in a book. Yes, it was in a book. A resume book. Uh, so, yeah, that's another thing. This movie is very late 80s, early uh -huh. 90s. Like, a lot of the references they're making. And it's like, man, this is really taking me back. Yeah. <laughs> um, she... Goes to apply for a job as a receptionist. Mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming she gets the clothes from her mom. Yes, which again, ho horrible wardrobe. <laughs> hey, she does a good job of putting those together. She I, looks very professional. I, the one she settles on is pretty yeah. good. All the other ones, like the mom, I'm like. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what she does. Yeah, I don't know what she does. I don't know. She has that nice big house. Yeah, she's mom. She's got like a farmland back there. I know. Yeah, there's it's a one bit, point. It's a disaster though, this house. There's one point where Sue Ellen's like, you don't even mow the lawn. I'm like, if I was that kid, I'm like, I, I'm not mowing this lawn. We need like a whole <laughs> landscape. We need a riding mower. Yes. Like what the fuck? And at one point he's mowing it with just a push mower. I'm like, that's a lot of land to cover. Right, they're in California and I could not place where they were. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't look it up, but I could not place um, how someone could have that much land. And Wait, she works in the city? Maybe we'll see if that house still exists. We'll Ooh. go out there. <laughs> but don't tell mom the babysitter. The house in the tra trailer of the new one looked a lot like it. It looked a lot like it. I don't know if they rebuilt it, found one similar. Or just, yeah. Maybe it's the same house. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to go down to personnel. She meets the receptionist, uh, Carolyn, right? I don't remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she was. The, how could you not remember the teacher from Superman 4 The Quest for Peace. I don't. I looked at her IMDb. And I'm like, where do I know that lady? Because I, they put the Christopher <laughs> Reeve Supermans on 4K, so I've watched them yeah. recently. I'm like, I've seen that girl in something. I'm like, oh, one of the worst Superman movies. That's where I remember. Um, so yeah, she's like real annoyed. She's very bitchy. She's such a jerk. Yes. Uh, and then we meet Rose. Rose. Who is the boss at this company. They make uniforms. She thinks it's like a fashion thing. Uh -huh. like, no, we design uniforms. <laughs> uh, but Rose sees the resume and it's too good of a resume. She gets the job as like an executive assistant. Wow. It's like, oh no. She's like, she uses her glasses to read the resume, but like, it's not even a different. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was weird. I like that she goes, I'm supposed to promote uh, Carolyn, but I don't like yeah, her. Yeah, I can't stand her. So I'm going to give you her job. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? I would have been just as upset. This, like this, this girl whole, just comes on in. Yeah. This whole thing reminds me of um, an episode of Seinfeld where George, his job interview gets interrupted. So he's not sure if he has the job <laughs> or not. But the boss of the company's on vacation, so he just goes to the job and pretends to work there, but he doesn't really know what they do. Uh, <laughs> he just gets in an office and just hangs out and collects a check. That's what she's doing. Pretty much. She has no idea what she's doing. Everything that they say to her, she's been used, like she uses it to. Yeah. We'll Delegate. She delegates. Yes. Okay. She takes the promotion. Mm -hmm. uh, Rose has a creepy boyfriend named Gus. Ew. He's like. Creepy right from the get-go. Gus is gross. Yeah. Uh, okay, so they eat out of Chuck E. Cheese, and I have a line here that Wait, Chuck... Wait, before that. What happened before that? Before that, she says those... that. Yes, do, what is the famous quote? Yeah, she just lets Christina Applegate know... <laughs> Wait, what was... I know the quote, yeah. but why does she tell her that? She's like, if I ever ask you anything, if I'm oh, on yes. the phone with a client or something, if I ever say this, say yes. these words, which is... I'm right on top of that, Rose, okay? You always say, I'm right on top of that, Rose, okay? Which is how <laughs> the new trailer ends. No, it doesn't end that way. I know, because they want you to fill in the gap. You just say. But... As someone who hadn't watched this movie in yeah. a while, when I first watched the trailer, I went, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm like, I've seen that movie. What? what oh, is that that's a terrible. 
But then I watch it today. We watch the trailer together. Yeah. I'm like, oh, now I get it. Yeah, like I knew what she meant, but yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But I know this person, we're Instagram friends. I think his Instagram handle is Gabagool or something. This is one of his favorite movies. Yeah. Like, he loves it. And he has an Etsy shop and he, where they work is called Gaw or something. So we okay. made mugs for that. <laughs> but I remember he, for some reason, he has like a whole like collection. Yeah. And he has a picture of Gus. And I just remember he wrote like, I'm right on top of that, Rose. <laughs> it's just so cool. Like he has multiple things. It's really cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, so it does have that cult following. Yes. Yeah, so at Chuck E. Cheese. Yes. I have a line here that Chucky teleports. In the wide shot, Chucky's kind of like between them. But then it cuts to, I think, Sue Ellen and Chucky is now behind her in a different part of the Chuck E. Cheese. Oh. I'm like, I'm like, is that Chuck E. Cheese? Is it really Chucky? It looks like, I think that's what he looked like back then. I think I it's a real Chuck E. Cheese. I didn't notice that. But I just saw him just like, I feel like Chuck E. teleports <laughs> and it really bothered me. I'm like, ah. I've jumped. always been scared of Chuck E. Cheese, so I wouldn't be surprised. But the Chuck E. back then, it was very scary so looking. Scary. They had to make him look a little bit better at mm -hmm. some point. So yeah, they, they're they eating dinner at Chuck E. Cheese. And then when they leave, <laughs> drag queens steal their car, including one that looks like Liza Minnelli. Yep. This is either going to be something that's not in the new one. No way. Or if it is, they're going to dwell on it for a really long time. It could go either way. We'll find out. Very true. Sorry. I do want to say, though, I kind of wish that the drag queens were the ones from uh, Tu Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Is that Patrick, Patrick Swayze. Swayze? Patrick yeah. Swayze. If it was Patrick Swayze, John Leguizamo, yes. Wesley Snipes, and they, that would be, I would be totally on board right. if they, both these movies took place at the same time Absolutely. and they stole the Buick. That would have been wonderful. That would have made sense. That would have made more sense. But it was Marilyn, Liza Minnelli, and I can't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> like, drag queens are stealing our car. And I'm just like, again, speaking of like the killer <laughs> boss. Uh huh. What is that movie? Why were these drag queens stealing the car? I want to go on an adventure. Yeah, I totally want to follow that. Is it like Tu Wong Fu? Yeah, are it they could on, be that. Are they on the run from the wall? Like, we like, should have really made the new one. We really should have. <sighs> they have to find us. We're somewhere. doing the Don't Tell Mom the Baby's <laughs> Sitter's Dead expanded universe. Are you going to say we're doing the Lord's work here? <laughs> no, no, we're making an expanded universe of who are all based on all the minor characters that appeared in this film. <laughs> I love it. What if it does well? They're like, Disney hires us. They're like, wow, we really fucked up with Marvel and Star Wars, but you guys <laughs> did so well in the Don't Tell Mom universe. It's about the details, people. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, the drag queens steal the car. They're screwed. They don't have a Buick, but they, uh, they end up getting Brian to pick them up mm -hmm. and he gives them some food. So whose car don't they have anymore? The babysitter. Okay. The babysitter had the Buick. Yeah. They have their mom's car yeah. still, but For they didn't have it there, obviously. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. They drove there in the Buick because she liked driving the old Buick. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like he shows up in the clown car. I and he, know. he always has to play the music. It's like, <laughs> he come does. on, man. He loves his job. He really is. He's very committed to the clown yeah. dog uh, empire there. <laughs> um, and when he gives her that food, just like something, I don't know, something <laughs> about those bags. <laughs> I really like it. Uh, she feels bad for quitting and making his job harder. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, that's okay. Oh, he's so sweet. What a simp. What a simp. He is a little bit of a simp. He is a very sweet. big simp. I know from experience. He is a <laughs> simp. <laughs> um, he asks her out for a date, though. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, I'm down for that. Good on him, I guess. Yeah. This is 90s Christina Applegate. She was a big deal at the time. This is good for Brian. And she's like, this is my summer. I need some sort of love interest. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I will say, yes, she was big at the time. Yeah. But I wasn't getting a lot from her in this movie. I feel like she was on the same note like the entire time. She eventually matures and grows. Yes. I, it's just like just monotone yeah. the entire time. Well, I feel like. We'll get to it at the end, but I feel like this movie could have used a couple of rewrites. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, she's dry. She's very dry. Very dry. Uh, what did you think of the cereal scene the next day when she makes them breakfast? I was like, okay, if you're trying to preserve food, why are you giving them all that? They're not going to eat it. It's going to be a waste. 
What's his name? Walter eats it. He goes right to town on that bad boy. It looked delicious. I'm telling you, this movie's ASMR for me. <laughs> but yeah, they were like, what do you want for breakfast? I don't even know why she asked them the question. Yeah. Because they're like, steak, this. Steak. She's like, I love when Daniel Harris, steak. <laughs> He's like, here's the entire box of cereal. <laughs> this is all the food we up. have. I'm like, a cup each would have satisfied yeah. them. I mean, <laughs> But they don't know yet, right? So she still doesn't know yeah. how to parent yet. No, she's she's... She's going in blind to this. Mm-hmm. She apparently didn't watch her mom at all. No. At least 17 years. Okay, yeah. So she goes to work and Carolyn is not happy. Mm-hmm. Really not happy. Uh, the head designer is the dude from One Who Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, I don't remember. He's the, my, I want my cigarettes. He was that guy. Okay. But he's also, I mean, that's a very famous movie. I understand. You probably saw him in the other movie, uh, Vanilla Ice is Cool as Ice. He's in that movie, too. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. You haven't seen Vanilla Ice is no. Cool as Ice? I've seen his season of The Surreal Life. Cool as Ice is not that good. <laughs> um, has Steven Spielberg cinematographer. Within wow. like a within like a year, he did Cool as Ice and Schindler's List. That was a very That's big amazing. year for Janusz Kaminski. That's amazing. Good for him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, every time I see this little guy, I'm like, oh, it's the guy from oh, what, he's what so the cute. Cuckoo's List. He's yeah. so lively and happy. He's just such a lovable guy. Yeah, like lovable. Every, even in that piece of shit Fidel Ice movie, I'm like, he's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he's the head designer. This is when she learns that it's like uniforms. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't know what to do at her job. And then she finds out that Carolyn is Brian's sister. Right. She's like, where'd you get that clown dog? She's like, my little brother drove it to me. Yeah, she's so mean. And again, it's a giant bag. (laughs) I feel like. Yeah. This is the 90s. We weren't conserving things yet. We weren't cutting down on paper. We're like, yeah, (laughs) a giant paper bag for one corn dog. Let's do it. (laughs) Oh, she's so demeaning, that yeah. girl. I don't like her. Um, Are we going to talk about Kathy? Oh, uh, we're. Go- oh, you know I have to talk about Kathy. Okay, good. She's one of two people in this from a certain show. Mm-hmm. But before Kathy shows up, the reason Kathy shows up is because fax machines, am I right? I still have no idea how they work. <laughs> now I would have a problem, <laughs> but I did know how they worked briefly. Uh, my first year of college, I was a courier for a law firm. So oh I had to le- I had to learn how to fax in things. Philly. Yeah, I would train down to Philly every morning because I thought it'd be cool. Like yeah, it didn't pay sure. much. I probably wasted more money on the train ticket, but I was like, oh, I get to be in the city in the morning and walk yeah. around. It was fun. I was eighteen. It was great. Yeah, I got fired. But anyway, uh, a different lawyer died, uh-huh. and we got all of their files, and they filed it differently from ours. Oh. But this is after like four months of me being good at it. And I was like, I'll oh, just guess. Nice. And then as I was in the hospital, like recovering from my appendix getting out, my, oh my friend gosh. who also worked there called and went, hey, they're firing you. You screwed up all these documents. Like, oh, oh no. It's really bad. I was 18. What are you going to do? Uh, Your results. <laughs> my, the girl I worked for there, the, lo- the lawyers followed me, mm-hmm. and fired me. But the paralegal, me and her were still cool. I helped her. I helped her move her uh, her and her boyfriend into their new house. Mm-hmm. And a year later, I moved the boyfriend out of the house. <laughs> so we had a good relationship. That's sweet. But wait, can you tell me how it works? So if you're putting it in, do you lose that piece of paper? Does it no, go no, to the no. other? No, it's just, it basically is like a scanner, like on a oh. printer. Uh, yeah, sorry, so it, I don't know. It just scans it. But like, I wouldn't know how to do it now. Okay. I knew <laughs> then and they had to show me. Because yeah. I remembered this movie and I went, I better ask how to use this. Definitely. I don't want to end up like Christina Applegate and everyone there was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Was she doing it wrong? Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think she knew that the paper was supposed to go in. So she's oh, trying to pull yes. it out. Mm-hmm. So she watches Kathy, Kathy. who is uh, Kimmy Robertson, mm-hmm. who was Lucy from Twin Peaks. Oh, Stephanie Brennan. I, yes. Every, I always, every movie she's in, I oh, have to mention that yes. she is Lucy from Twin Peaks. And we talked about her last on this channel in the Speed 2 Cruise Control episode with Captain Boomies. Well, she was in Leprechaun 2. And the Leprechaun 2. One. And I think when I reviewed that with James, I think I also mentioned that yes. she was in that one too. Because I was watching the first one for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And then the second one just started playing and I saw her in there. I can't believe we had the director of that on the Idle Hands episode, and uh-huh. I didn't think to ask him any. Oh. I just went, 
Good job on Leprechaun 2. And then oh, I asked nice. And then I asked him questions about Carnosaur. He's got like two bit parts in those oh, movies. Oh, that's okay. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, Leprechaun 2. That's great. I really got to talk about Carnosaur. <laughs> that's sweet though. Um go back and watch the Idle Hands review. Yeah, it's fun. That was a fun review. Yeah, I Didn't listened get many to that. Views, one. But that was a good one. And I'm sure this one's just going to clean house this episode. I'm sure <laughs> the next day I'm putting it up, we get the one out of 10. <laughs> I'm sure this isn't another soul man. But yeah, I soul man. Hit that like button now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Manny wants to review white chicks. Oh, cool. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you should be in that one with me and Manny. Oh my gosh, can I? I, like I would be cool. honored. I would love that. I would really enjoy that. I love that movie. She delegates her work to Kathy. Mm-hmm. She's like, "This is the QED file," and she's like, "Wow, yeah. wow, I'll do it." <laughs> I love her voice. She's so sweet. But like, what is that? Like, she leaves with it and comes back with it the same. I don't, I don't know, know what they do. I don't know. I need to know. I, maybe it's just business jargon. I don't know. I really want I've to know. Never, I've had to do spreadsheets and stuff, but I, I don't know what a QED is, a quarterly I don't something. Know. Anyway, uh, then we meet Bruce, the head inventory oh, clerk, yeah. slick back, sexy ass David Duchovny, Mulder from the X-Files, mm-hmm. but also... Agent Denise from Twin Peaks. Oh, I just know him from the X Files. Yeah, he's a jerk. Those. He is a jerk. He is a jerk. And I, I remember, like, I I see, I watched this X Files. I'd already been exposed to the X Files before I saw this. Yeah, I probably saw this like when I was like eight or uh-huh. nine, or like seven, maybe something. So I remember being like, "Oh, that's Mulder." I'm like, I'm not <laughs> used to seeing him in other things. Uh huh. And he's or, so young. Or being a bad. I think he's in the first Beethoven. Also, mm-hmm. I think I saw that on his IMDb. But yeah, I love it. He just comes in. She's on the phone. He's like, "Hey, where's the broad that's here?" Huh? Hello. He's yeah. He's like the big boob, whatever. <laughs> it was. You could do that back then. What? Yeah. As she's smoking in her office. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is really taking me back. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, when I, because he's dressed nice, I guess. Oh, he's got the way too big of a coat on. He seems like he's dressed nice, but I'm like, wait, that's what you do? That's That's your job? That's what I wanted to do with my hair. I wanted to slick it back for the review. I totally forgot. I wanted to try to get his help. I'm sorry. That's all right. Should we reschedule? No. (laughs) No, we're in it now. We're in it. I'm not taking two days to talk about don't kill, tell mom <laughs> babies. That don't kill mom. <laughs> don't kill mom. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a real jerk to her. But we find out that he's dating Carolyn. A perfect match. And then we realize they both have a reason not to like her. And upon rewatching this, not having seen it in a long time, like, oh, are they like, are they going to be like the wet bandits? Like, I know they're trying to like, <laughs> Get one over on her, but I'm like, I, I'm like, were there wacky shenanigans in this? Yeah, no. Also, I realized since I took the tape off the wall, we have a blank space, Oops. and now I'm pointing it out, so all our fans who have OCD are gonna focus on it. No. <laughs> They're gonna be like, ah, there's a tape missing. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so, but no, they just, they, I mean, they do have a little subplot, but again, it's one of those you kind of forget about as the movie's going. It's good that they stick together, though, on something. Yeah. But I'm trying to think, there is another couple in, like, movies that are like that. Oh, National Lampoon comes up first for the Christmas vacation. For some reason, oh, yeah. they came up, I don't know, they come up, I don't know. Um, but this is, uh, we get a scene here. That's a little bit of the beginning of Kenny's arc where they're uh-huh. watching Julia Childs cooking. Oh, yeah. And he realizes he's hungry and he's like, I should probably learn to make food. <laughs> Have we gotten to the part where he's cleaning the dishes? We're getting there. Okay. I'm We're sorry. Yeah. Uh, so Sue Ellen gets uh, credit for Kathy's work and she learns about the petty cash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Give Me Some Money plays by Spinal Tap. The movie then reminds you that Zach exists. Zach. Remember the other brother? Yeah. (laughs) He's sad about his girlfriend or whatever. That's literally my note. He's sad about his girlfriend or whatever. (laughs) Next up, Kenny's getting high with his friends. And then Sue Ellen chews him out. She calls him a prick. But I think they dubbed her. What did she say? Um, Punk. Yes. I looked at her. I saw that too. I'll slow it down. I'm pretty sure I read her lips and I'm like. 
So this must have been PG-13, mm-hmm. and they were like, we could change a few things here and there. Wow. When are you going to start helping me, you lazy little punk? Okay. Yeah, I, u- I recently used that word, so I knew that she said that word. Casey, what are you doing? Well, why are you using such foul language? Don't cross me. You know, you just got to watch your fucking mouth sometimes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> You know, it's funny. So they, it's a very obvious dub. That movie we saw, Fall, mm-hmm. that that was also going to be rated R. And they bumped it down to PG-13. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. They, did you see the video? They used CGI to paint over the girl's mouth, her saying fucking to freaking. No. Yeah, there's a whole breakdown. Please send me that because I want yeah, to see. She's like, I'm stuck on this fucking tower. And they like CGI to her her. That would have made lips, way more sense. <laughs> her lips now match up with the new dialogue. Like, oh, they can just do that now. That's insane. That's scary. It's going to fix a lot of things. There's a lot of older movies where they're saying other things. And you're like, okay. that's not what you're saying. Well, not this movie because we <laughs> noticed. Um. So, yeah, she basically chews Kenny out for being a low life with his mm-hmm. friends. Uh, they talk about, oh, she goes on her date and they're talking about their future. He's there to see fish mating. Very erotic, I guess. Uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, you want to see the fish? They, they fertilize their eggs or whatever. And she's like, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. But we realize it's because he's like, uh, he wants to be an oceanographer. Probably. Ocean. That's a thing. Oceanographer. Yes. There's another word for specifically fish Marine study. Marine biologist. Like George Cassandra on that one episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's like, I don't know if I really want to do the ocean or whatnot. But they're both having a con- like a real, like a very relatable conversation mm-hmm. of like, I don't know what I want to do. I mean, I know what I always wanted to do. Not really doing it now. I guess kind of. There's cameras involved. <laughs> Same. Movies are kind of involved. Yes, you are. You are. I've done some stuff. <laughs> Yeah, same. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the life of a filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're not sure what they want to do, but they kiss. Wait. And then all the fish are laying their eggs and fertilizing <laughs> the eggs at their feet. I was like, I didn't ew. I notice that. Like, yeah. ew. ew. That's something cool to like observe. I don't want to be standing in the middle no. of it. That's a little gross. And isn't there like a shot of his truck in the background? It's. It looks really... I was wondering if they had set it up like that or if they like copy pasted the truck in the background. <laughs> uh, You'll see. I can't remember. I'll you... check. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who knows if it's in my four by three aspect ratio VHS copy, but we'll you find watched out. it on VHS. Yeah. I said that oh in the beginning. God. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I rented it. Wow. And well, you have um, it on DVD. I know, but my, <sighs> I'm so used to like just laying in bed. <laughs> Watching it on my laptop, but you, but I watched it on my iPad and I on Amazon Prime, and you can make it that ratio. Oh, Isn't you can. That weird. Yeah, that's a spoiler. If you ever watch The Simpsons on Disney Plus, you have to go into the settings and set it to the original aspect ratio. Uh-huh. Oh, you didn't hear about this whole controversy? No. Always, do- if it's an old show from the '90s, always yeah. double check your. It has a feature. Because uh, they wanted to bump it up to 169, huh? but it wasn't recorded in that. So, like, it crops the top and the bottom of the frame. So, like, entire jokes were being missed. Oh. Same thing. I think same thing happened with, like, Seinfeld. Because they bumped it up to that wow. and it was, like, missing things. I do love uh, when old shows get put on streaming and they don't have the the mats to yeah. cover it up. You'll see, like, crew people off yeah. the side. Someone posted it. It was, like, an episode of Malcolm in the Middle. And it's... You're like you were only supposed to be see a shoulder, but now that it's not a mat, like Dewey standing is next to Malcolm. It's like who's that kid? It's like it. oh, that's the actor standing. Well, have you seen the Gossip Girl one? No. Where Blake Lively's in a dress, but she's wearing sweatpants under her dress. Oh, and you and could it- totally see it. She leaves, and then she has the sweatpants on. <laughs> yeah, because like she didn't know she like yeah they weren't filming that part. So that's but the thing I'm- that makes more sense to me because I was wondering why they. Maybe that was the first show they tried out for Disney Plus because I was like, why didn't they make these movies and like That's So Raven or something just look a little better before they put it on a streaming device? Yeah. But yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, The Simpsons, when they, before Disney Plus, they, when they put it all on that one cable channel, people mm-hmm. were like, what the fuck? This well, looks, that's why. Yeah. They're like, this looks so bad. And like, people didn't know that Disney had an option. Well, it didn't you know. originally. Enough people complained. Yeah. <laughs> this is when she starts becoming more like a mom. Mm-hmm. She's mad about the play. She's yelling at Kenny. She's like, you need to do the dishes. All right. And he does the dishes by having his friends throw them in the air 
and him shooting them. America. <laughs> it's right. the most American. I'll clean these dishes by shooting it with guns. He like sells plates now and signs them at conventions. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's such a weird thing. Yeah. Rose's uh, no strings attached boyfriend Gus. man thing. Gross Gus. Gus uh, takes um, what's her face out to lunch. Mm -hmm. And he's being, Ew, very, he's being very creepy. So he's creepy. so gross. He's like, <laughs> It's like, oh, you look, you look uh, very young for your age or something like that. He's being like real weird but about he's it. he's such a jerk. Like, yeah. He's like, we are not exclusive. It's like, oh, Gus, buddy, you fell for that. You fell for that old trap. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fall for that. And he that. says something like, like, we could have a cigarette post something bliss or something. It's like gross. Can I just, I want to give a, um, a message to the young men in our audience. Guys, if you're uh, in college... And you tell a girl, like, hey, we should be, like, a no-strings-attached casual thing. And she says she's cool with it. She's not cool with it. Yep, I she, second that. She's going to find out. And you're going to find out very fast that she was actually lying. She's very not cool with it. Yeah. Trust someone who's been there. Don't ever do it. Same. <laughs> Just Even if they say <laughs> They don't mean it. They do not mean it. They never, ever mean it. And even if they really don't mean it. They will all get attached. Or you will, which is worse. Yes. You don't want that. So many other girls out there, gentlemen. Anyway, uh -huh. I love when this show turns into a dating advice show. It's great. <laughs> we really need a separate podcast. We really should at some point. <laughs> With all our experience. It's going so well for me lately. I got stories. Um, what was the one? I don't think I ever talked about on the show, though. You know about it. The girl who thought my idea of a first date was too extreme. It was going out for drinks. No, you didn't tell me, Tony. I didn't tell you that? No. Yeah, she stood me up twice. Oh. And then she told me that, like, my first night, my idea of the date, she's like, it's just, like, too much. Can we do something less serious? And I'm like, I couldn't think of a more cliched date idea if I tried. If a guy just asked me out for drinks... <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it was like... Exactly. It's not extreme. It was, like, food or drink. Like, it's yeah. literally... Besides, like, movie theater, it is literally the most generic date you can think it's of. It's like the very, yeah, you're fine. So I was just like, what the fuck? Anyway, oh. dating podcast coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, Gus, creep. Uh, Swell and, or yeah, Sue Ellen and Brian bounce around like a Walmart on the she bouncing. She needs board. someone like him. She needs this peace, this fun in I, her life. This uh, is her summer. Honestly, I think they just wanted shots of Christina Applegate jumping her up and down. I don't. She was, she was like, it was. I guess it was kind of problematic now, but like she was like a sex icon at this no, point. I know, I yeah, know. so I think they were like, we need to find an excuse to have her bouncing up oh, and down. Come Let's on. come up with this. You, they can't be that disgusting. Uh, <laughs> I know. I mean, I did just watch that Nickelodeon documentary. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a lot of uh, a lot of shady stuff. Uh, but yeah, I like that he's bouncing around. They're doing it for a while, by the way. Yeah. And then he's like, "Is this a good moment to get?" That's like his whole thing. Like, is this a good moment? He like calls it <laughs> he's out. He's a hopeless romantic. Yes, it turns out it's not a good moment because some guy is just like, "You guys are adults." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Get out of here. Stop bouncing up and down. <laughs> okay, but then they start to have some tension. Mm -hmm. He's like, you want to go to the Dodgers game? And she's like, sure. He's like, my sister will be there. And she went, nope, I hate baseball. Yeah. She's being real shady. I just remembered I hate baseball. And then he's like, why won't you tell me what your job is? And she's like, I I, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I mean, She could never marry this guy. No. She couldn't. Well, I think she was going to quit the job once her mom got back. I don't know. I don't yeah. know if she was in it for the long haul here. No, but still, like, no. I don't think she'd ever have a good relationship with that girl. Mm. It was built on a lie. Mm -hmm. It was um, built on lies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're lying that early on in the relationship? What else are you lying about? I don't think he cares. <laughs> no, this guy's a simp. He doesn't yeah, care. Yeah, he doesn't care. So, yeah, she's acting shady. He leaves. And Kenny's learning to cook. Mm -hmm. He's been cooking all night, apparently, <laughs> making waffles and shit. 
And he's like real into it too. Yeah. He's like, oh, I found a passion of mine. Aww. That's not getting stoned with my friends. Um, all the kids start to steal the petty cash. Did we mention the petty oh, yes. cash? We did mention the yes, petty cash. Yes, we should mention the petty cash. So she's been buying stuff like food and whatnot. The kids have no concept of money, mm-hmm. so they're just stealing just wads of it for themselves. Oh, my gosh. Also, if she's trying to pull this con, she should be counting constantly. True. And checking constantly. The fact that she didn't realize that much was missing, it's like, oh, come on, lady. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, uh, she starts to get upset. She sees a bunch of young girls in a car Mm -hmm. dancing and whatnot. She's like, oh, man, I'm missing out on, like, the last few years of my youth. That reminded me of the scene in Legally Blonde when she's preparing for the LSATs and then she sees, like, them all partying. Oh. LSATs? I was like, man, I didn't get to have a senior week. Oh, yeah, me neither. Gus sends Sue Ellen roses. Oh, yeah. I love this part, though, yeah. because there's, like, non-diegetic sound in the background of the... Oh, yeah. Think, and right. she's like, oh, I, she thinks it's from him. <laughs> That's weird they don't do that more often. That was really funny. I thought that was gra- a great touch. <laughs> yeah. Um, But they did it with the... Well, that's different. Yeah. But, yeah, I thought that was a good touch, and then it's, ew, gross Gus. Yeah. It's Gus, but then she hides it. Because Rose yeah. comes in. She's like, Gus got these for you. Mm-hmm. They're your roses. <laughs> and they then make she, me glow. Because they had just gone on a trip. Yeah. <laughs> I love that she goes, have you Am ever to Santa Barbara? And she goes, have you ever had a 48 hour orgasm? And then, like Sue Ellen just goes, I've never been to Santa Barbara. <laughs> like She like just skips right past. Such that a question. lie. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> um. So Carolyn and Bruce, they're like starting to look into her a little mm-hmm. bit more. They're looking into her resume, realizing it might be copied uh-huh. and that the other companies don't know her. And shit's starting to hit the fan because now Brian is at work. Right. Talking to Carolyn. He's like, that girl took your job as a bitch. Oh, yeah. I hate her. <laughs> and then she walks into the worst office she could possibly walk into is Gus's I office. I know. But that's not what Brian's saying. Saying <laughs> Brian's asking his sister for advice. Saying like, what should I do? Should Sorry, I, I mix it up her? from earlier because I think he yes. he mentioned earlier that someone backstabbed her. He yes. made a comment about it, which got her angry earlier on. Yeah. I, admit, I confused those two. But then she she's like, get over her. Like, she's not worth it. And, and like, she's like, can I help you? And then she like leaves. Oh my gosh. But, and they've got like, she must be 28 or something. 27 or 28. Probably. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, then Gus is like, oh, you're in my office. Oh. <laughs> The worst one you could go into. I know. He's trying to make a move on her in the middle of all this. Mm-hmm. Don't do it, man. But the meanwhile, uh, Walter buys an entertainment system. Yes. Wow. I, all the audio stuff sounds cool, but it's so funny because like the TV was still kind of so small. small. Like, it's like this TV. Yeah. <laughs> That's a computer monitor, but still. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> there is another TV over there. It's kind of more accurate. The Smaller Magnavox. than that. It is smaller than that particular one, yeah. And ev- it's just, I can't even wrap my mind around what is, mm. what I'm looking at. Well, like, we see it, because they kind of break it apart and use it later. There's like yeah, five, I, I love that touch. A five CD changer. Yes, uh, I had that. Yeah. Uh, I knew someone who had, like, a five disc DVD changer, and I'm like, I've always, oh. before streaming and whatnot, I always wanted one for, like, when I went on my Seinfeld binges because I hate it like Aww, flipping the disc. Yeah, like, okay, I would have loved to like flip the disc too. Yeah, let's keep playing. I this. might have had one of those too, but not that many, not five. I don't even know if they make them. A part of me is like, should I look up if they make them? Like they're probably not. They probably stopped making them. And they're probably not as functional. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I'll look it up. Um, Because I don't have enough players. I have two HD DVD players, multiple Blu-ray players. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> So, uh, it's just so yeah. weird how we want everything to be so small nowadays, like just, yeah, as convenient as possible and like as thin as possible. And wow, that was just, I don't mind it. I don't mind, no, I, no, I don't so mind it. I'm just saying me, it's so crazy how me the, more than evolved. anyone else, I like having physical media players. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to conserving space yes. and not as many wires, I like the new flatter, tinier exactly. stuff. Yeah. I still want the physical media players. I just don't want the big giant no. goddamn thing. He has to fix the antenna and Kenny won't help him. Uh-huh. So he goes up there and he like falls off the goddamn roof. 
And how the roof is, like, sectional. He had to, like, fall off, hit, and then roll, and then fall. <laughs> Poor kid. Yeah. Breaks his leg. His arm. I thought it was, no, it was his leg. <laughs> is his leg? It was oh, his whoops. leg, because he had the crutches. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He's holding Where his leg, I? and you're like, his poor arm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they rat, ro- they rat uh, Sue Ellen out. They're like, look, Kathy, who's like sick and still doing the work. Yeah. Kathy did the QED report. And then Rose is like, you had Kathy do it? She's like, good job delegating <laughs> to other people. And I'm like, ha, 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 that's hilarious. So yeah, Ro- Rose is now totally on board with uh, Sue Ellen. Mm-hmm. Okay, but then they f- then Sue Ellen gets the call that she has to go to the hospital because Walter's yeah. there. And she's like, it's my son. I'm divorced. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. And, like runs away. <laughs> um, but then this, Walter getting hurt, is another reason Kenny realizes he needs to mature. Right. Because he's like, oh man, I wasn't there for him. I oh. should be paying attention to him and not getting high all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but then, like, she gets paid, and she can't put the money back in because she found out that the government takes your money. Mm-hmm. Every month, the government just steals your money. It's called taxes. Uh, Take a lot. Anyway, so she finds out about that. Um, but she's even madder that her sibling stole the petty cash. She's like, guys, I bought boots and, like, a lunch. And a magazine. And a magazine. Like, what the hell? You guys bought an entertainment And a diamond ring. (laughs) Yeah, a diamond ring for his girlfriend, which we don't see any of that. No. Because I don't think they filmed it. Um, The bike. Daniel Harris got a bike. Yeah, Daniel Harris got a bike. Yeah, so she's just like, oh, God, I'll never be able to repay this. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Um, And then Rose. She grounds them. She grounds them. But then, meanwhile, at the comp- <gasps> Tapes are falling on my foot. Is it going to be a problem? Or- I don't know. I mean, you can let them fall. They're no, not- I can't let them fall. Ah, I had to. Just leave it. That's fine. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. No, it's my fault. I got to organize back there. Oh, my God. <laughs> just, don't, just don't stomp your feet. I don't know. <laughs> so, back at the office, Rose finds out that her company is going to, like, fold. Yeah. Because- well, that was like a thing that they were talking about earlier that like, she's like, oh, these students, they need to have uniforms because they keep fighting each other over clothes mm-hmm. and whatnot. And the girl's like, well, I don't do that in high school. And then she goes, that was a long time for you. <laughs> uh, but she's like, the students have revolted. They're burning uniforms as effigies, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. Um, so yeah, uh, so she's afraid the company might close. She tells Sue Ellen that she has to fire Franklin. And he's like crying. He's like, it's okay. Yes. Uh, but then Sue Ellen's like, no, I'm going to take initiative. Mm-hmm. I'm going to fix these uniforms. I'm going to save the company. That's awesome. She's going to do it. And she's like, you know what? We're going to have a big banquet and we're going to show this off to like investors or whatever. And she went, yes, rent out a hall with the petty cash. <laughs> she goes, ah, uh, ah. Uh, how about we do it at my house? And any normal person would go, no. Right. What the hell are you talking about? The no- if that was even like a consideration, they'd be like, can I go to your house and see what it looks like before yep. I start inviting people there? Because it's more personal. That's why they want to do it. There. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she needs all the siblings to help mm-hmm. clean. Uh, I like when she comes home and Kenny is like mad at her. Yes, I love this scene. I love this monologue. Where they're basically acting like a couple. Yep. That's like growing apart. It's like, I didn't know you were going to be here. I broke the food. (laughs) You didn't tell me. I thought his monologue should have been the monologue that America Ferreira says in Barbie. I think this is the monologue. Because it's also a role reversal where he has the more feminine role. And she- <laughs> I think this monologue would have won her the Oscar. If they had just taken it, no yeah. one would have noticed. Yeah. By the way, very similar scene in Seinfeld. When oh, Kramer yeah. pretends to work at a company, he's just hanging out. Yes. And everyone thinks he works there. <laughs> Uh, but then, like, he stops hanging out with Jerry, and Jerry's just like, oh, you know, this was a dinner for two, but I guess they had, like, the same exact, I love Craver's just like, you I know, this seen is, that one. he's like, this is my busy time of year. He's like, you don't actually work there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I love the end of that, where they're like, you have no idea what we do here. He's like, oh, you're fired. He's like, well, I don't actually work here. He's like, that's what makes it so difficult. <laughs> but anyway. with these siblings, with yeah. their, ar- their Ar- argument together, yeah. uh, they're going to be great parents. I yes. think they're going to be very good parents. And this is where, like, the theme kind of shone through, like, yeah. death. 
Because the death to their old selves, I yes. feel. And again, if the movie was called The Real World, it's like, this is stuff you have to do and yep, deal with. They have and to make when sacrifices. You, when you mature and enter the real world. Uh. Um, so yeah, I kind of like that whole like storyline for them. Mm -hmm. uh, Carolyn and Bruce find out that Sue Ellen is only 17 because she left her purse with her ID uh. at the office. That wasn't smart. Uh, they're like, we got her now. But now all the kids are working together and they're getting their friends to help too. <laughs> Like Making an ice sculpture. Yeah. <laughs> I saw like the block of ice and then when we see that sculpture later, yeah, I'm like, that's the not guitar, the same block. Yeah, it turns into a guitar. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I like the receipt she wrote for it is like bodacious ice sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's cute. So yeah, they're all going about it, fixing up everything. Uh, I like that. Uh, oh, Kenny is now Kenneth. Yes. Kenneth. 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 They cut his hair. Yes. Um, good. And then Melissa's wearing the new baseball uniforms that mm -hmm. they were uh, shown. And I like that, like, Kenny's at her baseball game because earlier she's oh, like, that was you're, sweet. you're supposed to take me to the baseball. Again, I feel like a lot of that is, we don't really get to spend a lot of time with no. her either. So, yeah, she's there showing it off. She's like a waitress. The other kid's the maitre d'. He just got broken up with. Again, who cares? Yeah. But then, and then he falls in love with another girl, like, right away. He's like, oh, I'm into you now. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, then, uh, yeah, Kenny's friends are the valet, but they're on a break. <laughs> that was That's so a, funny. Like, we're on a break, dude. Just park your own fucking Yeah. Car. But her friends show up. Yes. They, I from guess Europe. they're back from Europe. They're back from Europe. Yeah. Just in time. Just in time. Uh, and she's going to make them uh, model. Model, model. And then Gus comes in. He starts making the moves again. And she Ew. sprays his pants with a water gun. Uh huh. A water gun that looks like an Uzi. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, El Mariachi by Robert Rodriguez. The guns in the movies, they were like water guns spray painted to look like real guns. Oh. Because toy companies used to make fake guns that looked very real. Yeah. And you could just spray paint them to look real. They don't do that anymore. Uh, so when I saw that, I'm like, oh, that's funny. Because when I watch El Mariachi, <laughs> I'm like, those are squirt guns just made to look like real guns. So yeah, she sprays his crotch. Uh -huh. And then Rose comes in. She's like, what is this? Yeah. Like, he's... He has a crush on me, and those flowers were for me, and he's a bad guy. Yeah, I'm glad that they didn't fight over it. They yeah. just got over it and yeah. went about what they needed to do. We're yeah, she's like, we'll deal with this later. Yeah. Let's get out there right now. Mm -hmm. um, and who wants to fight over him? Yeah. Ugh. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they uh, put on the fashion show, and I remember when this movie would come on, I remember my cousin saying, all those uniforms look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and they're supposed to be like the sexiest thing ever, or like the most they're fashionable horrible. thing. Like these, they look like clowns. Yeah. Speaking of clowns, Brian shows up in the clown dog car, professing his love, not <laughs> noticing all the cars that are parked and the light show going yeah, on. Yeah, I guess he didn't make it to the backyard yet. I don't know. He was like, it's like I a love long you drive. So yeah. much. <laughs> I want to be with you. With do, the do, music. Do, 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 do. You can turn that off. I had a friend who was an ice cream man for a bit. He would turn the music yeah. off. Um, and if things couldn't get worse, mom comes home. Uh, she's early. Busted. Uh, oh, also, we forgot to mention that uh, Carolyn reveals that Rose is, or no, reveals to Rose mm -hmm. that Sue Ellen is underage, and Rose just assumes she's yeah, lying. She's she like, care. what are you doing? But no, Sue Ellen finally comes out. She's like, I lied. I'm not this. Well, before that, yeah. the mom is like, you're in big trouble. It's yeah. like, okay, the house looks so nice. Can you just like let it play out and yeah. then ask later? You totally sold her out. There, there are worse parties you could come home to. Yeah. If, if like my mom came home and that was happening, she's like, what's going yeah, on here? Yeah, she'd be curious. These are very wealthy people here. Yeah, and then Kenny's trying to like disrupt her. I'm like, yeah. just let her finish. <laughs> Mom's home. Uh, But yeah, the mom is pissed. So she feels that she lied. But then like the mom also notices that they also kind of matured. And she's like, oh, actually, uh -huh. actually things look pretty good here. I don't know what's going on. Um, but you were saying that she confesses yeah, to everyone. Yeah, she, she confesses to everyone. 
Uh, Rose is actually happy. She's like, oh, the people actually loved it. I mean, legally, I guess she can't hire her or whatever. She wanted to. Yeah. But uh, Christine Applegate says that, oh, no, I want to go to college and all yeah. this. So I really hope they hire Kathy. I really do, too. Kathy deserves it. Yes. I thought that's how it should have ended. Yeah. Like, getting a little bit in there. And she even tells her, like, I know some people at Vassar. I can get you in. Yeah. I can get you in. That's uh, cool. So that's a nice note to end on. Mm -hmm. Um then uh, Brian and Sue Ellen make up, and then they make out. <laughs> and then you've you've forgotten about it the whole movie. The mom comes out and goes. One more thing, yeah, mom. Where is the babysitter? Such a good note to end on. And then there's even a credit sequence of the morticians. Yeah. They buried her. They're like, I'm going to miss that old lady. They're like, you don't even know who she is. You didn't even know who she was. I'm like, yeah, but she had a lot of money. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, they get, they take the money. Oh, they pocketed the money and then they buried Vegas. her. Vegas. They yeah, they're to about Vegas. to go to Vegas. But I love that they made her the tombstone and it's just the note, nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> Died of natural Aww. causes. Yeah. And then the movie ends. Uh, it ends with Tommy Jane's dragging the line. Uh, is it Home Alone times five? I guess because there's five kids at the home, uh, but they're rarely alone. Their friends are over all the time. It's not Home Alone. It's really not Home Alone times five. No. Did, Did you just, see that? Did that just change? I think so. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the lights are haunted. I didn't even touch the thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I... So yeah, it's definitely not Home Alone times five. It's no. not even really Weekend at Bernie's. It is its own thing. But I, if I had to make changes. Okay. <laughs> Besides our other changes for the remake. Well, no, that's different. <laughs> um, look, I, I love Daniel Harris, but I would have cut her and the other brother out of this. It's just too many siblings. Because <laughs> like, you kind of forget they're there. They don't really add much. You could have just done the two older ones and then the younger one. Yeah. Like Mrs. Doubtfire. You have the two older ones and then the youngest one. Right. I just think they wanted to make it more chaotic. Yeah, but like. Like how are they going? They wanted to raise the stakes. I guess. But again, the, the two middle kids kind of in and out in the movie. They're not really. They are, yeah. They don't have really any. like The one guy like, oh, a girl dumped me and I found another girl. What was Melissa's arc? She wants someone to go to her ball game. Okay. I know, and but I there is a moment where Sue Ellen helps that brother, like with dating advice and stuff. I guess it's just I don't think you needed it. I think you could have trimmed those two out, and streamlined yeah. it a little bit. Because uh, I was invested in the Kenny and Sue Ellen stuff. It really sounds like you would like. This movie, Adventures, Adventures of Babys in Babysitting. I should rewatch Adventures re in Babysitting. It. It's been a very long time. I would movie. love to review that at some point. And the I, new one. Again, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah. I will check out Adventures of Babysitting. Cool. I will figure out if I like it or not. And if you don't hear from me, I either didn't watch it or I didn't like it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm sure I'll like it. I don't know. You, you still really like this movie? Is there I anything, do. I love them. Is there anything you would change, that. though? I think we went over everything pretty much. Yeah. I just wanted like some wacky shenanigans. I told you it's a comfort movie for me, I guess. It is. Again, I I wish you could have just toned down the script a little bit and just focus on Christina Applegate and Kenny. Because yeah. I'm like invested in all that. I think she could have given more. Like she didn't yeah. seem stressed at all to me. Yeah. That's the one. I do like direction. I do like how mature it is in some parts. Like the the brother is getting stoned. They're not really dancing yeah. around it. Uh, <laughs> again, this feels like it was. Then a they get the dog stoned. Yeah, they got the dog stoned. You don't really see that in PG oh, movies, especially so at the time. This definitely was PG thirteen. They're like, no, Home Alone's yeah. too big. Let's change the title, make it look wacky, yeah. trim this out. This was after Home Alone. Like, wow. I think so, yeah. I well, I guess. Well, yeah, because it's Home Alone times five. <laughs> uh, it has to be 1991. It was like the year after Home Alone. Um, but yeah, I still really enjoy it. Nothing yeah. made me, like, I didn't watch, sometimes you go back and you watch movies, you're like, oh, that didn't hold up. Again, other than just some changes I would have made, it's still fine. Is it worthy of a remake? I mean, I guess you could do something with this concept again of a babysitter dying and the kids trying to. We'll see. Work around it. We'll s I mean, I don't feel like watching the new one. I You're not going to watch it? Oh, Tony! I have to? It's the on Netflix. Point. It's oh, on Netflix. I thought Netflix. it was going to be Tubi for Tubi Tuesday. Uh, 
Oh, don't worry. We do you want to do a commentary to... track for it? Or we we'll do that. Say, it's streaming, so I we could do it. Whole... Yeah. I just wanted to talk about the original. I didn't I could never figure out a way to talk about this original um, line. And I'm like, well, that's this... the reason it was remade. <laughs> I'll give the new one a shot. I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'm going to give it a shot for sure. I'm not expecting much. Um, no. Already it has too many kids, which is my problem with this movie, <laughs> but maybe they'll all have their own little arcs. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So we will check that out. Casey, what do you got going on? You just, where, where should we follow you? Oh, you go find me on Instagram at Casey the Final Girl. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you can follow me. On all my socials. Book me on Cameo. I want to do more Cameos. I really like doing Cameo. That's fun. Sign up on Patreon. Uh, I've been doing more bonus videos over there. Oh, cool. Um, I think maybe a second episode has come out so far of of the new hit show on Patreon, Blade Boys, where (laughs) me, Royce, and Pessy are going through every episode of the TV series of Blade. Because we reviewed the Blade... We review the Blade movies, and yeah. did you know that there was a Blade TV series? No, I had no idea. It lasted one season on Spike TV Aww. in 2006, so it's got hot babes, bad green <laughs> screen, and cheesy action. <laughs> Wesley Snipes isn't in it, but they got Sticky Fingers, the rapper who was in Leprechaun Back to the Hood. They got him to replace Blade. <laughs> yeah. So check that out, uh, and check out all our other bonus stuff. It's fun. Goodbye. I didn't think of a skip. We should have killed a babysitter or something, but whatever. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talking, talking about tapes.